So the next one, uh, we could say um, calendar has a change. Yeah, that would be interesting. Also, like maybe because I not use it yet, how to use calendar at all, <laughs> okay. and then what the change is. Okay, so let's uh, clean this out, and uh, have, then we have a normal date picker. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically yeah, it needs a selection and a label. Mm -hmm. So let's add the label first, and we say um, text, and it's a uh, pick a date. Mm -hmm. So that's what is shown as the button or the action to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get a label uh, on the left side and on the right side. Ah, you get okay. The selector, that's, that's the picker. So um, then we need here. Uh, it's a binding for date. So we create a state variable. We call it date, and it's type date, and we initialize it. And um, then we can say here we add the binding with the dollar sign mm -hmm. date, and then I resume, and hopefully dot. Okay, let's add a little bit of pattern. But also, isn't there a now or something, or like today or something for date? Yeah, we have uh, yeah this one. It's the same. Yeah, we finally have a name now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's the standard uh, date picker. Mm -hmm. So you can tap on the why is it time. Up, why, is, why is it up there? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Um, and uh, the calendar view, so that to so picking the date, and you can select the date, and then it switches. Yeah. Um, mm. You also have the state is updated. Yeah. yeah. You can, um, I think, display components. Uh, so uh, only date, then mm -hmm. you don't have the time. Then hour and minute, then you yeah. only have the time. Yeah. So it depends on what you want to select. And without it, the default is uh, date and time. But I still don't understand why it's up there, because it's like the, yeah. the most far yeah, the, the, away the, from... The thing is, um, SwiftUI takes all the space which is available. So maybe when we when we say um, we put it into... But it's like an overlay, place. so... Yeah, don't know. Yeah, maybe it's similar to back. So we can try something if we put it in a V stack. So normally you would you have other element on top of it or something, a title, something like that. Yeah. Ah, still. Okay, still. I mean, I, maybe I, maybe it's a preview. Yeah, I don't mind if it's like disconnected, yeah. but like the top left corner is that, but is the the worst yeah, reachable. It's, it's also you... in the simulator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe can you? You have to to specify where to like an anchor or something. I don't know. Good question. Maybe open the the date picker and in the source and see. You can do that. Or documentation. Uh, da, da, da. Date picker selection. Yeah, that's what we have. Uh, ranges and something like that. Yeah, that's that's the range. Display components, label. Hmm. Uh... Okay. I I remember back then in the Objective C days with the pop over controller, they had like let the thing know where to mm. to anchor it. We have different styles, maybe we can use it. Ah, the real one is the old one, right? Ah, okay, yeah. It's the old style, yeah. Ah, then it's like this, yeah. And what else do we have? Automatic compact. Okay, that's the compact one, that's the default one. And then graphical. Ah, like then then it directly inlined. included, yeah. And then it's a little bit better. Then it's better, yeah. That's, that's how I would expect it. Yeah. Okay. So with the date picker style, you can adjust it. And yeah. So if you want to display it inline, you can do graphical. Or if you want the old one. But the default one is this one. 
So that's not a new feature. That's the old feature, yeah. the date picker. So let's have a look at the, at the new feature and it's a multi-select. So it's almost the same. <laughs> we have multi date picker. Ah, I thought maybe it's like an option so you can, but it's a different. No, it's a different component. Yeah. yeah. And it has a little bit different binding. Ah, that's why. Yeah. And so uh, I should have copied it, but let's put it in here again. Pick dates. Yeah. <laughs> now we have different ones and we need a binding of a set date components. So, so not dates. Yeah. Date so component. let's change this one. We have dates and uh, it's a set of date components. That's another way to initialize it. Mm -hmm. So you can do it with the equal sign or with specify the type here, but that our audience should know that. <laughs> so um, now I have a private, the same as before with a set, and then yeah. we pass it with the dollar sign and say dates. And that should work now. Okay, now it, it takes the whole space. So let's make it a little bit smaller. And not with height. No, yeah. then it looks a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So in this component, what it can do is um, select multiple dates. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, maybe we can say we, we put the selected dates on the bottom or something mm -hmm. like that. So we could say, uh, let's create a variable selected dates. Selected dates. And it's a string. So let's output it as string or something. So, and we could say, um, what right. we get is a set of date components in here. Yeah. The selected yeah. ones. So we can say dates, um, and we could have no selection. So we could have a nil value in there or, or no value. Yeah. But nil not, but nil empty, shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't be possible. So, yeah. but to be sure you can do a compact map to filter out all the possible, or is it? Yeah. So compact value. And then um, the cool stuff with a date and stuff like that, you can uh, format it directly in Swift UI. Mm -hmm. um, but for that, wouldn't it be like nicer to like, instead of returning string, returning like a, a view and have like just a stack with text and then the format the date thing you, you want to? Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Just for that, uh, yeah, it's we, we do it like that. Yeah. Uh, we say, um, um, what can we do? Um, date formatting is, you need a calendar, right? Yeah, that's why I thought that the um, the text, I think the text element, text view, mm -hmm. has something. For Some built-in formatters, yeah. Right. Yeah, and then so, we could use these. Yeah, we could all use this one or let's try. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. While, while you try, in the chat was the question what we are building today. Um, we are looking at um, additional iOS 16 features of SwiftUI. Um, again, <laughs> um, so because there, there are some left, and next week is the Apple event, where most likely we will get at least a release date for iOS 16. Um, and yeah, that's, so we're just looking at, at different things. And if you have some iOS 16 um, Swift UI features you want to see, you can also let us know, you can take a look. Um, and right now we're checking the new multi-date picker calendar. Yeah. So um, I can pass in the set with the components in here. No, you have to, um, I, I would think you have to make, I have, I need to, um, for each, and then multiple texts and per date component. Okay, let's create a date. Right, so okay. for each dates. Yeah. Now let's see if we need an ID here. Let's, and then we say we have a text. And then. Yeah, there I'm not sure because they still have date component. That works. Nope. Uh, 
value into expected time. Okay, so so we, what we can do is uh, transform the dates yeah, into have... strings or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so that's what I thought you you do down there. So you make yeah. the so we could say um, the one with uh, it's, let let me think how we do it in Swift UI. So this one is then. A component yeah and uh, code completion so what we can do uh, da, 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 da. so you could either have like a what uh, we, a function converting yeah, it with a date? calendar we can create from the components a date yeah so you can you why could not use the default there. one but you can also put a calendar there the Gregorian yeah thing. The nice thing in Swift UI is uh, we have environment stuff. Yeah, and also calendar. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And we say, okay, give me mm -hmm. the calendar. So that's the standard one. Yeah, that's the good. one which is currently active in yeah. the in the, yeah. in the uh, device. So now we could say um, for each component, we can you call it on component, create a date out of it, or do you need like uh, let's see calendar date. Components, date, um, date from, from date components. components. Yeah, that's, that's the one we want. Yeah. And we say that components. Yeah, it's actually, components because you have a set of components. So every entry is a comp. So, yeah, that's basically the dates. That's the components. And so, date components yeah. is like a set itself. Uh, and this one is optional. Is it? Yeah. Why is it why is it optional? So maybe I'm wrong. So the dates is like a set of the date components type. So every entry in the set is like a date components. Yeah. And it this one returns a date optional. Ah, that's why. Yeah. Then make an info yeah. around it. So that yeah. is what I thought you could use your property for. Yeah, exactly. Um, converting it to a set so of dates. So when we do that, then we don't get nil values, right? So we could say yeah. we do this thing in here and say from yeah this one. Yeah, but the return type would then not be string, but yeah, yeah. and, and, and maybe... then then we could say okay, let's format this one or something like that. We can say. On the on the date, we can say format. yeah. But so yeah, you could do that, or then use the for each with that select the dates property, and then you have a date and can put it into the text. I oh, mean that yeah, one selected yeah, yeah, dates, yeah. and not format yeah. in here. So just return one, return. But instead of type string for selected dates, it needs to be um, a set of dates, and maybe. I we could try of sorting it first and return an array of dates there so that we always have them in chronological order or something. Because the set is like different every time. Yeah. So what do we want to do now? So an array here? What have you just said? I think it already converts it into an array. Um, yeah, it cannot convert it to a set. Yeah, because it's, so, if you do compact map, it so we, creates an array. So we return an array of yeah, dates. Yeah, exactly. So that one, yeah. then we loop over the dates yeah. and say we get a date. Yeah. And then we have a date yeah. here and say date time format. Yeah. That should work. Yeah. Preview is Reference. referencing. Ah, that's what I meant yeah, before. Yes, so. um, when the uh, the object implements identifiable, then you don't need the ID thing. Yeah. Otherwise, you say okay, the object itself is should is, work. Should guess, the yeah. ID be the ID? So mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah. Yeah, and so now, now st start selecting. So it keeps the order then. No, it changes oh, every time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically random because you have a set mm -hmm. which has no order, and then. You convert it and it takes the order it has at that point, basically. But and if you now at the after compact map, put a sort. Um, but just put sorted maybe would be enough already. Yeah. Yeah. Because that already sorts by the by the now two dates are sorted. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So can it also do ranges that they pick up? Ranges, good question. Like a range mode or so, because that that is what I assume with multi date picker that it's not like single selection, more like. Um, so we have in selection in and in is a partition range up to date. <laughs> okay, but I, I yeah, guess that's... that's that you cannot um, so that you can say okay within this range of yeah. this year, so you can you can select. So. You could say it's in and then a range. So we could say you could say now dot 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 and then uh, date dot now. Yeah. Dot 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 and then date and then... time interval since now or something. And a big number. Yeah, it's maybe not big enough, but yeah. Uh, what does it say? No exit. Oh, it's too fast for me to read. No match to call to initialize. That's not the right yep. range then. We used it. But just. The question is for what it is for the initial time interval or for. Artificial range up to date date so let's say then maybe you remove the now in it lower bound and unchecked bounds lower and upper so you have to in it, it's an object yeah so yeah have, so that's that you can like have yeah so just the lower just upper so we could say something like that from now so it's what now, what was the type of it upper range Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can also like init it with the range. It does it automatically. But yeah, that should work as well. Yeah, that should work. Hopefully. <laughs> so basically we need this thing here. And add it in here. Yeah. So your number was not high enough. It's just today. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. We add some zeros and then yeah, we, yeah. we get a higher range. So yeah. So but there's not only this the the dates which are yeah. selectable. Yeah, so yeah, but no so range. You, you want to move your finger or something. That would did you mean right? Yeah, or do you, you have to select start and end date and it picks the range or so. But yeah, you could also like. Yeah, you have to do something like this. I don't know. I guess you can like um, implement it yourself that you say, okay, if there's just, you can only select two dates mm -hmm. um, because you can control what is in dates, right? So you can, when you select third one, you then. Um, use that as the starting date again. So, yeah, so first yeah. thing you select start, second end, and if you then select something else, it removes what is in there and use it yeah, as a new start yeah. date. For example, yeah. yeah. Or I just thinking about use cases for this one. The single selection. The, the multi-selection. Yeah, in the, the individual selection, I mean, yeah. yeah. Usually you want to range. So, so a range from 11 to, from the 11th to the 16th or something. Yeah. I would. Usually you would then have that's the other option. You have single selection and just select the start date first, yeah. and then, and then next the end date. Second and, date. Yeah. Yeah. and this is like maybe if you say I want to create this this meeting mm -hmm. on this specific dates in the month or so, yeah. and then you can just select. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's basically the multi date picker. Yeah. Nice. Can you can you yeah. do? I guess with foreground color and so on, you can. Also before, um, already changed the styling and, and so. Let's see what. Uh, I think it's more accent color and yeah. stuff like that. So hopefully, maybe select a day. Preview post. Uh, no. Uh, OK. 
very interesting. Maybe you can open the, the documentation of the, the multi date picker. You can check there. I'm not sure if you'll find it in here. So maybe about um, the Apple documentation. Mm, where is it? There, yeah. Hello. There. Uh -huh. So range. here's the thing with range from the calendar. Start and I maybe we should have used the, the um, not including the last date range, and then it would have worked. Hmm. Uh, okay, inbound, so environment. environment. So you can add a local for displaying the stuff. Yeah, in a calendar. Uh. Time zone makes sense. Uh, pick, picking dates in range. I know in range, same mistake we made before. Yeah. yeah. Picking dates after, after date. dates. That's the partition range. Yeah. Thing. That's starting from that. Yeah. Mm. Picking dates before a date. Okay. Yeah. That and then. But nothing not, there. Yeah. So no. I guess it's possible, but we don't know the correct view modifier. That's one of the the. Um, I think not, maybe not problems, but hard things with Swift. Yet how to find out now, how to how to set this. Background is not color. Not color. Yeah, that's but that's this. Yeah, that's that's the. From the whole yeah. view. The foreground color we tried already. I'm not sure because you then directly switched it. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, or maybe that's a beta thing. Uh, I don't know. Is, is there a tint color? I, is I it... would expect that I can change. May I maybe tint color? Tint. Ah, there we go. That's the tint color. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> sometimes I find it a little bit misleading because you have accent color, you have tint color, yeah. foreground and background color, and I would have said, uh, yeah, in my mind when I set an accent color, I would have uh, yeah, but on the, on you the, have this effect. On the other hand, at least with UI kit, it would be clear to set the tint color because yeah. it's the, the thing I called there, with the more options there, and it's not obvious. You can set it on everything. Mm. Color, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So that's the multi date picker. So okay. let's remove. So Ted yep. is asking if we can change the font. You mean the in font. the in the in the okay, calendar? Picker. Yeah. So let's see if the size doesn't it's, work. It is numbers get bigger now. So we can say system. With a different size. No, it's not mm. working. Yeah, that's exactly. So curious, what can we customize? Yeah, so that's exactly what we also do. <laughs> put it, put it there, and then try out things. What what can be changed? Um, yeah, that's is is there like a um, date picker style you can set? Sometimes ah, maybe, they also maybe, do it like yeah. that. Yeah, let's. Um, date picker style. Yeah, it's the ah, same one the like game, a normal yeah. date picker. So let's see what happens if we select one, because then with a wheel you can multi-select anything. So yeah, it, it I, makes I guess no this, sense. this then not yeah. only applies for the normal date picker, not the yeah. other one. But maybe when we have a date picker style, do we have a multi-date picker style? No. Okay. Okay. So it looks like you can just. Uh, adjust uh, the tint color and stuff like that. But it's a good question because if if you have an app with a special font, yeah, custom font, um, and you want to use that, then it would look strange if the font is different. No. So just use the Apple font. <laughs> That's normally a, a good advice. So I don't have a custom font now here, so to test it out. Yeah, but we but, tried with with yeah, yeah. title. So, and so but on. when large title and stuff. Uh, but work, also the uh, question is how would that apply because the the view itself has multiple different font sizes. Yeah. Um, and if you just say make everything big, it, it would break that. So I would expect without changing the dynamic sizing should work. Yeah, it's also possible that. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, the labels. Yeah, also the, the numbers are getting bigger. Yeah. 
Okay. So the standard dynamic stuff works. I guess that's just no, no way to set the whole thing. Yeah. Um, maybe with environment or something. Yeah. And also could be that if you set it to a different font specifically, that this maybe applies and mm. it adds the, the weighting and so in, in generally. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on in the list. <laughs> 